Uh, thanks very much, and good morning. Um, this, this is uh, looking at um, a different um, type of change and type of benchmarking, whereas the last um, presentation was about, I suppose, comparing orga similar organisations across the country and being able to benchmark against them. Uh, the Making Justice Work Programme is actually looking at, uh, against a range of functions, the Making Justice Work Programme is looking at one area of service around the, the delivery of justice and the justice system, um, but looking across different kinds of organisations and uh, with different responsibilities in the system and trying to see how we can create a change programme which will um, operate um, across the whole system. So it's almost as if we planned it. We've got two different contrasting um, uh, approaches to uh, to change and improvement and to benchmarking. Going back to the um, the steps for change that are in the um, the paperwork that that you've all received and, and the kind of improvement framework that we're talking about today. Step one is around um, vision and aims, and this is the, the the vision that has been established for the uh, Making Justice Work program. That the Scottish justice system will be fair and accessible, cost effective and efficient, and make proportionate use of resources. Disputes and prosecutions will be resolved quickly and secure just outcomes. Um, obviously, one of the things that's important about visions is that they're compelling and people can get enthused by them. I think something that sits under this is something about the importance of justice as a thing. I mean, both as a kind of abstract concept and as something that's a reality in people's lives. Um, justice, um, you know, somebody said, and someone much more eminent than me said, you know, it's a, a delivery of, you know, protecting the citizen is the first duty of the state. So on the kind of criminal side, particularly, the idea of the justice system protecting the public is something that's fundamental to any kind of functioning state. And even on the civil side uh, of justice, um, the issues of resolving disputes without people, you know, uh, hitting each other and resolving disputes in a way which um, allows people to have confidence that if they make an agreement it will be adhered to uh, it's something which is absolutely fundamental to, to an economy, it's fundamental to strong communities, it's fundamental to um, most of the outcomes that the Scottish Government and everybody in the room is trying to secure. So I don't think it's hard to make a compelling case for justice as a sort of abstract notion. I think what's important about the programme and the vision is that it starts to make, um, to reify that, if you want to put it into kind of a philosophical language, to turn it into a set of things that we can do that might actually make things better. Um, I've, I've taken to a fault the, um, uh, the order not to talk about what we're doing, but to talk about how we did it. So I haven't actually said anything in the slides about what we're doing. Just very briefly, what the programme is about is um, a set of uh, change projects around the courts and tribunals, which are looking at structural reform in the courts, so we're trying to move cases down the system, um, looking at process reforms in the courts so that cases are managed much more effectively than they are at the minute. Uh, reforming tribunals, uh, integrating the administration of tribunals, um, developing new ways of delivering access to justice and better ways of delivering access to justice so that people's problems are resolved earlier, linking into the agenda around uh, prevention, around empowering citizens to help them resolve their own disputes, and underpinning that all with joined up IT. So that's what the programme is, uh, and it's at the service of, um, of this vision. So how did we get to that vision? Um, I mean, the trouble with a lot of visions is they seem self-evident once you put them there, but they're not self-evident until you create them. And, and there was quite a lot of work went into the creation of the, the vision for the Making Justice Work program. One of the things we had and one of the, the things that drove the creation of the program was we had lots of different reviews, proposals, suggestions for reforms, things that were needing done in the system. We had you know, reviews of the civil courts, we had reviews of the criminal courts, we had people calling for things to be done around mediation, around arbitration, around uh, legal aid. Um, and it became absolutely clear, once you started putting those all into one place, um, that, that needed coordination, it needed joining up, and it needed prioritization. So I suppose that's where we started getting into step two of the improvement framework around thinking about creating the conditions for uh, change. Um, but in order to make some sense of all of the different <laughs> things that we, we could change um, and had to work out how we we're going to change, what we we're going to change uh, and when, we needed some kind of organising principle. And the organising principle uh, for us was the national outcomes. And we started um, from the national outcomes on the left. Those of you who are familiar with Scottish Government Outcomes, which was most of you will be familiar with the 15 national outcomes. Um, we took it. We did a process of um, logic modelling within justice, and this wasn't just didn't just deliver the Making Justice Work program. It actually developed a whole suite of change programs in the justice um, uh, arena. Um, 
focusing on, I think, the three biggest outcomes for us around living our lives safe from crime, strong and resilient support to communities, and public services being high quality, continue improving, efficient and responsive to local needs. Um, and particularly 15, I suppose, was seen as being the thing that the Making Justice Work program was seeking to deliver in, in terms of the, the world of justice. But in order to get some kind of traction on what we needed to do, um, we used the kind of logic modeling techniques to develop intermediate outcomes um, which we could focus on in the justice system and which could drive change across the whole system, not just in the individual organizations. At the same time as that, you know, given that we weren't starting with, as it were, we had no idea what to do, the problem was we had too many ideas what to do, um, we had to look up from the potential reforms that had been um, identified or were being promulgated or argued for um, and looked at, well, what are the benefits that we're actually trying to generate? And I think somewhere between the change and the outcomes um, sit the benefits. And we spent a long time developing uh, this, a benefits framework for the Justice Forum program. Um, we call it in the office the, the big eye of justice. Um, and it's really there to tell us what the projects are there to focus on, what they're there to seek to achieve. And you'll see the three layers of that on the outside, enabling benefits that the system has an increased capacity for change, um, that justice has some degree of quality assurance. In the middle, business benefits, reduced system costs, reduced system time delays. So all of those are kind of operational and organizational things which we common to most kinds of change programs, most kinds of management uh, systems. The really hard stuff is in the middle around the fundamental benefits to end users about affordability, improved user experience, increased public confidence, and a fair and equitable justice system. I mean, fundamentally, that the justice system should be just. Well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, so, um, this, you know, we workshop this with lots and lots of people. We went back to the program board that is overseeing the, the um, Making Justice Work program uh, several times, so we've kind of settled on this as um, a reasonably clear way of identifying the complete picture of what we're trying to achieve and it's very important that we maintain the focus not just on the things that you know thought we could measure quite easily but the things that to be honest we're still working on how to measure them we're still not quite sure how we measure fairness within the justice system but we're getting there and we're developing some ideas around how we do it so why is change hard in the justice system? Well, these are some of the things, I suppose, that are fundamental to any successful um, change across a whole system. That you've got some proper baseline, that you know what you're starting from, you've got some shared understanding of what you're trying to achieve, there's a cultural collaboration across the system, and there's a governance framework to make the change happen. Now, I mean, it's, it's probably not over dramatic to say that at the start of making justice work, we didn't have any of those things. Um, baselining, baseline data is notoriously difficult to find in justice, particularly on the civil side. We hadn't been able to publish civil statistics for several years because the quality was so poor. There are genuine philosophical issues about understanding collaboration in the justice system. It's not an accident that judges are independent from the state. It's not an accident that the Crown is independent from the state. It's not an accident that ministers can't tell police what to do. It's certainly not an accident that we can't tell defence lawyers what to do. So there are the real fundamental constitutional issues about an adversarial system which is about people trying to achieve different outcomes in a, in a case. And it's very hard in that kind of world to say, well, let's forget about all our independence. Let's all sit down together and talk about how we can improve the system. That's a tricky thing to do, and you have to really be very, very thoughtful about what kind of collaboration you're doing and, and, and to what end. Um, an absolutely crucial thing to the progress we made on making justice is the governance framework, that the development of a guiding coalition, that all the key players in the, in the system, certainly on the, on the public sector side, are engaged in the programme board. So we have the courts there, we have the Crown there, we have judges there in a capacity as advisors so they can protect their independence. We've got people in the tribunals there. Um, and so on. So um, that creation of that framework at the centre was absolutely fundamental to, to making the change. Well, it's very difficult. There are lots of other things we could be doing. We could have quite easily kept ourselves busy for the next three or four years doing all sorts of other stuff. Why did we think we had to do these things? Well, it's partly because the people in the system were telling us that it needed to change. This is Lord Gill's comments around the the Scottish Civil Courts provide a service to public that's slow, inefficient and expensive, procedures are antiquated, the range of remedies they can give is inadequate, in short, they're failing to deliver justice. 
So the very thing that the justice system is there to do, the second most senior judge in Scotland is saying, we are not doing. Now, you know, you can't, can't ignore something like that. Um, and you could find similar comments about aspects of the criminal system and administrative justice. So that's great. I mean, in terms of creating a kind of compelling argument for change, probably not, um, you know, on its own going to do it because there are a lot of other people who are saying, well, actually, it's not that bad. Or if it is that bad, it's just because you need to spend more money. Um, or if it is that bad and it's not about money, change will be worse. You know, those are all things you'll hear in the justice system all the time. It's, you know, it is quite a conservative place for a number of uh, obvious reasons. So the authoritative voice for change in the system is quite important in terms of creating the conditions for change. But I think it's also important to have the real hard evidence. The first of those um, lines is uh, a figure from the Audit Scotland report into the criminal justice system. Churn is where cases uh, come back to the courts more than once, often unnecessarily. So the churn of cases was costing £40 million pounds a year. Now, you can, you can argue about how accurate that figure that is, but it's telling you something quite significant about the, th the, the system. Some of these other statistics, you know, if, you, if you're not, you know, I was quite shocked by some of these statistics. I guess some people in the system might be more inured to it, but the fact that um, we were having to set up a system so that a court would know that a person was supposed to be in the court was in the jail. You know, we, don't, we, didn't, you know, we didn't have a system that was able to tell us that. That tells us something about needing to, to kind of change the joint of the system. So um, I think it was important that the, the people in the system have all accepted a kind of collective challenge that you know, we, we, can't, we can't accept this and we can't continue uh, to tolerate those kind of um, inefficiencies in the system. So some of the stuff that's been done, this is probably, in a sense, the easier stuff, the business benefits. Um, and some of this work, um, to be honest, predates the formal Constitution of the Making Justice Work program, but it was developed through similar methods around summary justice reform. This, these are measures that have been developed around whether or not um, a summary trial, a summary case has been disposed of through the system from start to finish within 26 weeks. Um, and we now have some reasonable clarity across the system about um, where that's happening um, and you know, at what stage in the process might things be going wrong. Um, and those statistics are updated monthly and published quarterly. So I think we've moved beyond what I suppose is the start of any kind of improvement, which is that organizations can performance manage their own performance into a set of figures that will help your performance manage across the system. I suppose the third stage that we haven't yet got to is having this kind of fully open, fully transparent and in, and in real time. And that might be an interesting way to develop. It's not without risk, as people said. I think previous attempts to publish some of this data have led to press headlines about who is Scotland's laziest sheriff, for example, you know, by looking at the number of sitting days that sheriffs have sat on the bench. So, um, and as people have already said, people are, on, are not looking for the good news stories in any of this stuff. The stuff that's really difficult, going back to the center of the eye around the quality, has, have people's experiences actually improved? Um, this data comes from the um, Scottish Crime and Justice Survey and is looking at um, whether or not people feel that they have access to the legal system. Does it bring people to commit crimes of justice? Does it provide good standards for witnesses and so on? I mean, the good news about that is that the numbers are going in the right direction. I mean, the bad news about that is that's not because of the result of anything that the Making Justice Work program has done because it, it, it happened before then. Um, but you know, it, it's a way of actually getting us um, to understand where, we meet, where we've come from and where we're going. Um, it also, I think, helps tell us where we need to focus our energies. The really bad numbers are around cases being dealt with promptly and efficiently and the standard of service for victims. Um, and it's helped us reflect on the fact that we didn't have enough in the programme about uh, victims. There's been separate work going on around victims, and it is a political commitment. But until now, we hadn't formally thought, well, this needs to be part of the Making Justice program, it needs to be part of this set of change. So it's one of the ways in which the data is starting to help us think, well, are, are we actually focusing on the right things and do we need to focus on some, some other things? So in conclusion, these are some of the things that I suppose we've learned in developing this program. And I, I, I would stress we are very much on the start of this journey. This program is, um, has only been going for not much more than a year. It's a four year program. The end point at the end of four years is not going to be that the justice system is that much better. It's the justice system is ready to be that much better, frankly. It'll take 10 or 15 years before the changes actually happen. And one of the things, I suppose, that is a learning point is that 
part of the change is getting better at measuring the change. Um, that's something that the program needs to do for itself. There's a, a, a need for the program and the change to pull itself up by the own bootstraps and identify what the measures are that are going to drive the change. So it is about collaboration. It is about um, a rich picture in terms of thinking about benefits, not being seduced by uh, the things that are hardest to measure. Um, and it is about um, a quality system, not just a set of quality outputs. Um, and the last point I'd make, as I say, I mean, I know we all think that our, our area of reform, and I think Derek made this point to me when I commented back once on his little patient quality thing, everybody thinks their part of the world is uniquely difficult, has a unique set of challenges, is uniquely problematic in terms of reform. But I do generally think justice is really, really hard. So uh, if we can do it, then I think anybody can do it. Thank you.